I've been promising for some time to talk about the various methods of compressing air when playing the trumpet. I like to keep my promises. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Brian from Airflow Music. Alongside publishing our books for brass players, we're releasing a bunch of videos with tips to make brass playing easier for you. So if you're new here, please subscribe to the Airflow Music channel so you're notified of all of our videos. This video is part of the Trumpet A to Z series. In a number of previous videos in this series, I've referred to the physical compressions we can apply to our air in order to access different registers and get around the trumpet as easily as possible. Each one will get a video specifically about it over the next few letters of the alphabet. But I wanted to start out by identifying them for you and talk a little about how they fit together. T is for three. One of the most confusing but most important aspects of playing a brass instrument efficiently is developing an understanding of the roles of and relationship between air volume and air speed. In particular, it can unlock easy access to the upper register, which is something that most trumpet students I encounter are keen to improve upon. The quick basics that you need to know are that air volume or air quantity controls acoustic volume or loudness, and air speed controls pitch. The higher the pitch, the faster the air speed. I detailed the physical relationship between air speed and air volume in the last video in this series, S for shortcuts. To recap, if I want to play two notes an octave apart at the same volume or loudness, then the higher note requires half the volume of air moving at double the speed. In particular, people tend to have a hard time with the airspeed component when I write about this online. Let me try to better explain. Teaching brass playing can be challenging, most particularly because we can't always see what we're doing. So much of it is about what happens inside our bodies as we breathe and blow. Therefore, we've arrived at a kind of generic method of getting beginners started, which requires us to lean on a couple of instructions which are less than ideal. One or both of them comes into play when, after getting the first pitch established, we need to move to a higher pitch. We're most often told that we either need to blow harder, or pinch or squeeze our lips together more, or both, in order to get to that next higher note. I should say at this point that I'm just stating facts and not trying to blame anybody for anything. I don't have a better solution than this. And if you do, please comment and tell me about it. I'm all ears. The instruction to blow harder and or make the space between our lips smaller works because it relies on the first compression. That's lip or aperture compression. That's the compression method we all tend to lean on since that's how almost all of us learn how to play. I was no different and played that way for the, roughly the first 25 years. The trouble is that it's fundamentally inefficient since it's the exact opposite of how the physics of the trumpet works particularly the air-speed-air-volume relationship I described earlier. You can only fight the physics so hard before something has to give, and that's almost always flesh before metal. That's a big reason so many of us struggle with range and efficiency. To explain further, it's the basic thumb-over-the-end-of-the-garden-hose analogy, which we've heard time and time again. If you've ever watered your garden or washed your car with a hose, then you know in order to make the water spray out more quickly, if you don't have a nozzle attached to the end of the hose, what you have to do is put your thumb part way over the end to make the hole smaller, which increases the speed and intensity of the water flow. If you want it to go faster still, you have two choices. You either put your thumb further over the end of the hose, making the hole smaller still, or you turn up the water pressure at the tap the hose is connected to. Either way, the water pressure is increased in the hose. That means that when it reaches the exit of the system, the point at which there's no further water pressure acting upon it, it moves out extra quickly as a faster jet. In terms of trumpet playing, I'm talking about blowing harder or moving more air instead of turning the tap on more and making the aperture between your lips smaller instead of putting your thumb over the end of the hose. The trouble is that the garden hose analogy is incomplete since we're not blowing into the open air. The instrument itself is the exit from the physical system and it's also designed to further compress and speed up the air which, in simple terms, then creates the sound wave, which is amplified throughout the instrument. Therefore, it provides resistance which we need to balance with. Or much of the air we're trying to send out gets backed up and causes the unpleasant physical side effects we associate with overblowing. That's excess body tension, mouthpiece pressure, and so on. The good news is that we have two other methods of compression at our disposal, which we can use to regulate the airspeed without relying on such a large volume of air. 
Firstly, we can use our core or our abdominal muscles to apply additional compression to the air we inhale and, once engaged on the inhale, to regulate the compression as our air is released. That's what we do when we breathe in support in the way I described in my earlier video B for breathing. Secondly, we can change the shape of our tongue to change the size of the oral cavity to further regulate compression. This is commonly known as tongue arch or tongue level. Let's extend the garden hose analogy to include these. Now we have some sort of valve or nozzle connected directly to the water tap the hose itself is attached to. That's the core compression, the abdominal compression. Then we have another nozzle later in the system which is the tongue level. Then we can choose to use our thumb over the end of the hose if necessary. If we completely extend the metaphor to include the instrument itself, then I hope you can see that we now have a system capable of spraying the water much faster in a wider jet and potentially for less input if we balance the way the components are used carefully. It's more elaborate but can be much more efficient and offer much greater control. When we play the trumpet we use a balance of these three compressions. It's how we balance them that makes a big difference to our efficiency and our ability to access different registers. I'll go into more detail about how we can use the three compressions and how we can have them all work best together over the next few letters of our trumpet alphabet. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or other feedback about it, please comment below. Otherwise, please hit that like button, subscribe to the Airflow Music channel and share this video with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. I'll be back on Monday with another exercise of the week and again next Friday with more Trumpet A to Z. In the meantime, please visit airflowmusic.com and check out the various books, exercises and other merchandise we have on offer. All sales directly support making these videos. I'll see you on the next video. Now, go practice.